Hey guys, today I'm going to be making shoyu ramen. This is my first time doing a solely fish based broth, but let's get right into it. I'm still learning how to fillet fish, and I realized that I kind of butchered this, but not in a good way. So disregard the technique of cutting, I should be doing clean long cuts rather than a sawing motion, and it might have been easier to remove the heads before filleting them. Anyways, I'm just getting the heads and bones of three red snappers and then paying extra attention at removing the pen bones from the fillets, which took way longer than it should have. But it's really important to make sure that you get all the bones because you don't want to be eating the fillet and then you get a bone in your mouth, maybe you swallow it, it's not a good time. I got the idea for doing snapper ramen from Ryan's video on the way of ramen and I'll definitely be using more fish in the future. I tried to make a python with the same bones, and let me tell you, I did not like the outcome, <laughs> but uh, maybe I'll try again in the future. I'm, just, I'm, I'm freezing some, so I can do sashimi. Yeah. yeah. Before, before the ramen, you eat the skin off, don't take the skin off. Skin, I know. I mean, yeah, exactly. And you have to torture a little bit, and do the burn Torch it, right? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. So they're gonna be real good at the but this is gonna be crunchy, crispy. So after I've removed all the heads from the fish, I'm gonna be salting them here to help remove the funkiness and the fishiness from the heads, and then try roasting them to help draw it out more. I probably should have rinsed the salt out and maybe cleaned the head out a bit more. I think this is where my python went wrong, but the chintan still turned out pretty good. To make thin shavings of the katsuboshi, I'm using a traditional Japanese kezuriki, which is a wooden box with an adjustable metal blade. Now I do have to consult a professional to get some more details on this. So I called Oba. Hey. Yeah. I have a question. Oh, for ramen? Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna start it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do uh, shio. Shio tare. Nice. Oba gave me the katsuboshi from Japan when we went in 2017, so it will probably be hard to find these unless you have access to them from Japan or you can go there. But with COVID right now, obviously that's not really an option. Um, I've never seen them in the US, but if you could find them, they'll probably be really expensive, so I don't recommend it. You can find pre-shaved katsuo in Asian grocery stores, and I think even in some regular supermarkets in the Asian section. And it'll save you a lot of time to use these. If you do have access to katsuo boshi and want to prepare your own dashi from scratch, it's important to use proper technique, which I clearly do not have at all. But hey, I'm learning. So to continue with the dashi making, I'm going to take about two to three pieces of dried shiitake mushrooms, 20 grams of dried herring, 80 grams of dried niboshi. Sometimes they're called iriko, um, but it is a Japanese dried baby sardine. And sometimes it's translated as anchovy, but it's actually a different species. And 100 grams of dried fish shavings. These right here are store-bought pre-shaved bonito flakes. And I use a little bit of these because I had a little bit left. I'm going to soak this in 2 liters of water overnight, or about 8 to 12 hours. Now that the fish heads are done, it's time to start the snapper chintan. I just put the bones and the heads in a pot and didn't let it go above a simmer. And I cooked this for about an hour and a half. After everything has been completely hydrated, put on high heat for 30 minutes and don't stir. Take out the kombu at 176 degrees Fahrenheit to avoid a slimy texture, and after 30 minutes of simmering, strain it. Usually dashi refers to kombu and katsuboshi broth. Kombu, if you guys remember from my last video, is Japanese kelp, or it's like seaweed, and the katsuboshi is the skipjack tuna, dried and cured. I'm going to be making a sakana dashi. Sakana means fish in Japanese, and dashi is a clear broth of synergistic umami compounds. That sounds really complicated, but it's actually pretty simple. Dashi can be made with many other 
glutamic acid and sodium inosinate rich foods like shiitake mushrooms, anchovies, and other dried fish. Probably pronounced inosinate, inosinate wrong, but uh, what's really important here is that these two substances help create umami, which will add a lot of depth to food. If you want to make sure there are no particles left in your dashi, strain it again through a finer strainer or use a broth skimmer. Is that what these things are called? Whatever. For the tare, I used about two tablespoons of smoked shoyu, one tablespoon black garlic shoyu, half a tablespoon of sakura shoyu, two teaspoons rice vinegar, one teaspoon sake, half a teaspoon of fish sauce, one teaspoon of honey, and a dash of salt. For the toppings, I used some sous vide pork shoulder, grated daikon and garlic, and lemon zest. Daikon is just a Japanese radish. I'm also making a quick soft boiled egg. I'm so used to marinating them that it was a little runny, so I have to adjust that more next time. If you want to center the yolk, make sure to stir your egg the first minute of boiling. Because of flour shortages, shout out to everyone making bread for their quarantine activities, I used some instant noodles. And I cooked those to the package instructions, of course a little underdone, because I like them nice and chewy. Whatever the Japanese equivalent of al dente is, is what I'm looking for. Then I portioned out the snapper chintan with equal part sakana dashi and brought it up to a light simmer. If you want to use just all one soy sauce, that's totally fine. I wanted to get a little fancy. I wanted to go for a really deep, complex shoyu tare, but a simple shoyu tare will work just as well. For the assembly, I used 30 milliliters of shoyu tare, followed by 330 milliliters of the broth, and then pork shoulder, egg, microgreens, grated daikon and garlic, lemon zest, and garlic oil. Lastly, of course, I had to top it with a sheet of nori, which is toasted seaweed. This bowl was super tasty. I was super happy with the balance of fishiness, saltiness, acid, and umami. The garlic oil and the fresh garlic paired super nicely. I definitely have some improvements I want to make next time, but I'm excited to make more fish ramen. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope you were able to experiment with more fish in your ramen as well. いただきます。